A legend is a person that inspires. An extremely famous or notorious person, especially in a particular field. From humble beginnings in Youngstown, Ohio, to having a ministry that would impact people all around the world, Bishop Norman L. Wagner exemplified legendary qualities. Bishop Wagner served as the senior pastor of Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church in Youngstown, Ohio for nearly 40 years, and two terms as the presiding bishop of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. In honor of his birthday, I took a trip down memory lane with the person that Bishop Wagner shared his life with. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Rita Helen Wagner. Now, take me back to the beginning stages because you were married to Bishop Wagner for such a long period of time. But take me back to when you guys first met. Was it at church? Was it at a revival? Was it maybe just at a social gathering? There was a church and a revival was going on. And my mother told me I had to go to church. And I wanted to go to the record hop. Yes. And she told me in order to go to the record hop, you'd have to go to church first. <laughs> yes. And so I went to church so I could go to the record hop. But I got baptized. But I also heard about this, you know, this brother at church that, that was so dynamic. And I wanted to meet him, you know. And I don't know. I, would, I don't know if I was thinking about for abortion. I just really wanted to meet him. That's yes. what I just wanted to meet him. And so from there, I mean, um, from that time, um, he tarried with me, and uh, when I got the Holy Ghost, and, yes. And um, uh, and then from there, I mean, you know, the relationship was built. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. So from that interaction and from that encounter, you all will go on to date. Now, how did he exactly ask you to be his girlfriend? Because the way I asked my girl, at the, well, the way I asked her now, she's my fiance. Um, I had called her up on FaceTime and asked her if she would be mine. Now, obviously FaceTime wasn't around back then, but exactly how did he ask you? Um, we were at choir rehearsal and um, before choir rehearsal started, I, mean, I don't remember if it started or if it was after, I can't remember, but it was in, it was in the spring, so it was daylight. So. Um, we were uh, on the outside and, you know, he walked up to me and said, happy birthday, and he gave me this card. Yes. And then he asked me, would I be his girlfriend? And absolutely, <laughs> I did not make a mistake. I said, I answered the right way. Yes, you did. I said yes. And that's the beginning of our relationship. I love it, you know, and from those humble beginnings, so many things were created and so many things were birthed out of that, including basically part two of the church known as Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church. Now, Bishop Wagner, before him, it was Bishop Robinson, Bishop mm -hmm. James E. Tyson, and then it was him. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you all early in his pastorate? Well, he was born into the church. His mother was, uh, uh, when the church was Mount Calvary Baptist Church, she was the secretary. And then when somebody came through and made, you know, that was from the PAW with the Holy Ghost and things like that, then they had to go to court and she was the secretary. And so out of that, of her being there, she stayed there until, you know, after, you know, when she passed. I mean, so she was there all those years yes. there. But um, that's how, you know, um, the uh, everything, you know, started right, right from her being at the church. And I mean, and it was, it, um, it was a challenge because, you know, when you go in behind other people, yes, then the saints that are there, they're expecting you to be like the other p person. Like some folks would want you to be like Bishop Robinson, and then the other followers would want you to be like Bishop Tyson. But uh, Bishop Wagner, my husband, he be. He was a person of his own mind. Yes. And and he lived off of what God told him to do. And he depended upon God's word where his fasting and his praying and all that. It brought it, you know, to fruition where he became that person that, you know, that God wanted him to be. Yes, he did. And he did so much for the saints. He was always praying for them, always fasting before the Lord on their behalf. What was his prayer life like? Oh, I couldn't keep up with it. I mean, I tried. Yes. <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I couldn't. I mean, you know, everybody has their own way of praying and, and, and things like that. But he was, 
the type of person that he fasted three days out of the week. Yes. And then, uh, and then, but he prayed constantly, just, just, just constantly. And I remember <clears throat> when he was called to the ministry, um, and it was on our anniversary, yes. our first anniversary. And so, and I had fixed this dinner, you know, for him, and and because um, we were too poor to really go out, so he said, "I can't eat right now." He says, uh, "The Lord's calling me." He said, "I got to go to church," so you know, I I wasn't nothing for me to say, but okay, so I did that, and so and I kept waiting on him to come home, waiting, and got later and later and later and later, and um, and at that time, uh, uh, Elder Stanley Robinson uh, from Akron, which would be Bishop Robinson's son. Yes, uh, they were called on the same night, and um, um, they met. I guess going to church. Yes, and so, but anyway, they walked down to the church, and uh, and uh, that's when God called them to the ministry. Then, and and uh, but I know you asked about the pastor, but uh, but it really started from there. Yes, and God told him to take his shoes off and come into the pulpit. Wow. And you know, and then when you go into the pulpit that you you're standing in God's shoes, not in your own shoes. Yes. So he God wanted him to remember that part all the way down through. So that's really I mean, you know, how it really started when he was called into the ministry on that time. And then when he came home he was explaining to me all would happen and all what God had said. And you know, it kind of makes you kind of jealous, but then on the other <laughs> hand, it makes you scared. It makes you fearful because I don't know if I could, you know, handle, you know, that part there at that time, you yes. know, if God came, you know, uh, I've had experiences with God. I mean, you know, of course, down through the years as I got, you know, uh, more settled and within the word and things like that, but. yes. At that time, I probably would have just ran out of the church screaming. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but that's it. Yes. Know. So were you ever intimidated by his relationship with the Lord? Oh, because no, 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 never, never. Because I knew that that that's the type of person he was when I met him. And I'd rather for him to have a relationship with God than with a whole lot of other folks that, you know, was not on the same level with him. Yes. And I'm not saying that he was above, but whoever you're with, you want, if you marry somebody, you want somebody that's on the same level with you. Absolutely. So that you can grow together. You understand what I'm saying? So that's the same thing like with us when we started out, we were on humble, very, very, very humble beginnings. Yes. So we understood what it was not to have new shoes. We knew what it was not to expect a whole lot of stuff we you know we did what we had to do and that was it yes and you had just mentioned the challenges that you all faced because it was not all smooth sailing i remember hearing your daughter a uh, christian give testimonies about when you guys were first married that a lot of times you didn't know when your next uh, meal was going to come in didn't really know where a lot of things were going to come but the thing that she had said that bishop always said was god is a provider and the Lord will always provide if you keep him first. How much of God's provision did you see early in your marriage? <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Every day. You know, there was times, really, yes. when we didn't have. And so I, I don't know uh, who, did them, who did it at the time. Yes. I know, you know afterwards I did find out. But, but uh, somebody would leave a bag of groceries because we lived in an apartment, they would leave it right at you know at the door. So when I opened the door, it would be there. And then I remember that one time I had three dollars. I had three dollars, and I had to go to the grocery store to get enough to get us through the week. And when I went to the store, I took this three dollars and I asked God to multiply it and just you know bless me to get what I needed. Yes. I asked him to direct me. And I mean, and and he did. And, and he stretched that money. And I had enough food to, that we, that we were able to eat through yes. the whole week. 
through the whole week. I mean, it wasn't steak and stuff like that. I mean, <laughs> but it could have been chili. It could have been, you know, it could have been um, uh, spaghetti. It could, I mean, just, you know, the meals that, it, that would last, I mean, you know, al yes. along the way. And I mean, so, but he's, I've never seen God let us go without. He always provided one way or another. Yes. And, and that's the thing that uh, I, I, I learned to trust because I would see my husband trusting and, and I got on the bandwagon with that because I knew he wasn't going to stray himself yes. and he wasn't going to stray me in the wrong. So, I mean, I learned to depend upon my husband's faith as well as that was building my faith as well, you know, as far as in our relationship. Yes, and it's incredible to see how, you know, you two's faith was constantly being built and how it continued to grow and grow. And from your marriage came two beautiful daughters, Christian and Camille. And I just find it so amazing how even though he was a bishop and even though he was an evangelist, he always still made it home. Mm -hmm. He always still made sure that his wife and his children knew how much he loved them more than anything in this world. And something that I always wanted to ask was, how did he manage all of that? How did he manage being a husband and being an evangelist and being a bishop all at the same time, as well as being a father? Now, you know, you got about three or four questions in that one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now, uh, it, we were married 12 years. Yes. Okay, uh, before we had Christian and, um, um, and I had miscarriages. I yes. Had, I had miscarriages. And the doctor told me, the doctor told me that I would never have children. And, and he said, if you try to have them, and if you did get pregnant, you're not going to hold it. So yes. don't, even, don't even waste your time. It was a Jewish doctor. And so from there, um, I, you know, I would become discouraged. But then I just started believing. And I remember going on a five-day fast straight with nothing. I fasted straight five days and I asked God, you know, to bless. And then I remember we were on consecration and um, um, he had asked, uh, my husband had asked everybody to come down and ask for something from God. Yes. And I sat in, the, in my seat and I told God, I said, there's nothing that I want. I said, I have everything that I, that I need. I says, you know my desire, you know my heart. So there's no need in me asking you for yes. this at all. Um, I would read every day about Rebecca, Rachel, Hannah, the, you know, the, the barren women. I would read about them because I wanted to find out in the scriptures what it was that change God's heart to bless their womb, yes. you know, to, that they would be able to have children. And I felt like I knew each one of those women personally. And so when I went down for prayer, because I said, I have to be obedient, I went down for prayer. Yes. And when I did, and I, and I kept telling God, I said, no, there's nothing. I don't know what I'm going to ask him for. I don't know. And so then when I stood before my husband, he never opened his eyes. He never opened his eyes. So he didn't know it was me. Yes. And so I told him, I said, I want peace of mind. Yes. That's what I want. And that was it. So then he prayed for me. And and I don't I can't remember, you know, his prayer or anything like that. I mean, because the spirit was kinda hot. Yes. But then then he leaned down and said God said that you shall conceive within the year, that you shall have wow. a child within. The year. So, you know, and I, I, I just stood there. I mean, I just stood there because I knew it had been 12, you know, it had, at that time it had been 11 years. And so I couldn't, I was, I was trying to comprehend what was, you know, what was being said. Yes. And so I stood there and I was looking at him and then he opened his eyes and he said, oh my God, he said, this is my wife. <laughs> That's yeah. incredible. Yes. And so then it hit me when my eyes hit his eyes. Then it hit me, you know, what was really said and what was really going to happen. And I mean, and I just took off. Yes. You know, I just, I just took off because I was, was rejoicing. Yes. But the thing of it is, is that within that period of time, I totally 
had peace of mind. I didn't think about getting pregnant. I didn't. Th I didn't think about anything at all as far as a child. It, yes. I, it would. God took that all off my mind, and He just gave me peace. And within that time, I woke up one morning and I says, I said, I'm sick. I said, I just don't feel good. And He says, Well, what do you mean? I said, I just, I don't know. I just don't feel good. And He said, He came back. He said, I know what's wrong with you. And I, I looked at him like he was crazy. And, and he said, <laughs> he said, I know. He says, he says, you're pregnant. I said, no. I said, no, I'm not. I said, no, I would know. And he said, no. And I, I always kept, you know, a log book. So I op opened up the book and I, I said, oh, I says, I, I am, I, I, I am late. So we went down, you know, I called my doctor and, 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 uh, and, and, uh, and actually, it was Dr. Henry Holden. Yes. And and uh, I says, can I come in? And he wanted to know why. And I told him. He said, no. He said, just he said, just you know, just you know, go up to the lab and and, and give them you know, give you you know what they need. And and that's what we did. We went up and I did that. Yes. And then and then, uh, and I forgot about. It. I mean, I totally forgot about it. Yes. My husband was the one who kept calling. Have you heard anything? Have you? Heard? <laughs> he was so you know what's in. And so then finally, finally, the machine broke, so wow. they couldn't do that. The machine broke. But I mean, then finally, Dr. Holden called and told him, he said, you know what it was. And, and, and he, come, he came home telling me, you know, and he was so excited. I yes. Mean, that was really a good day. And we took my mother, his mother, and Naomi Carpenter, took them out to dinner and shared with them what, what you know, what was going on. So that was a great day for us. Yes. And, and then... You know, and then the rest is history. It really is. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, you know, your daughters are going to do so many amazing things. Now, I do know, and I'll get back to the original question, was how special was it to you that he still made sure to be home for birthdays, for Christmas, for Thanksgiving, all the major holidays? The, um, it, I mean, it was very special because he was very dedicated to the family. I mean, family was everything to him. Um, because of how he how he was raised and his within his house and his household. Yes, um, it was very it was very special that he stayed up, you know, with uh, um, on everything, you know, with with uh, birthdays, uh, Christians, Camilles, Britishes. Yes, uh, and uh, and that was it. I mean, because he didn't get a chance to. Uh, well, I will tell you. I, I will tell you afterwards. But, yes. But um, but we called us to wherever he was and where, however they wanted him to come to different meetings. He scheduled his meetings around our birthdays. Yes. And, you know, around our birthdays. There's only one time that I remember he missed mine was that Bishop Brazier had wanted him to come, and so he asked me, "Would I mind?" And I said, "No, no, no. Go ahead. It's fine." He said, "Are you sure?" <laughs> I said, yes. I said, I don't mind. I would have been scared no. to ask my wife, hey, can I miss your birthday? I, I got to go no. preach. I would have been scared. No, no, no. Because, I mean, you know, in, in marriage, it is. It's, it's, it's give and take. Yes. It's, it's a give and take thing. And, you know, if you take something, then you got to give something. And I mean, and I know that Bishop Brazier was one of my husbands, Bishop Brazier, Bishop Johnson, uh, James A. Johnson, they were idols of my husband and 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 he respected them greatly and whatever they wanted he would try to you know to to do that yes. I mean, he would really you know try to do that and we went to indianapolis many times for bishop tyson as well so but it was a thing that you know that that uh, uh you know is it, did I answer your question yes ma'am okay. <laughs> okay something that i've always admired about bishop bishop wagner was he was a man of vision. He was a man that could see things so far down the road. Take me back through those PIP years. What was that experience like for you? Well, one thing, it was, it was a lot of work. It was, it, the work, it was, um, he, um, he was, he um, um, fasted a lot. Yes. And he would seek to see what you know what God wanted because each each um, PIP was different. None was the same. There was no duplicate you know in it and, yes. and things like that. So what they had what he had to do was to um, 
um, see God each time and and, and but the preparing for it and getting things done and 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 getting the right speakers for the for each time you know it, it you know it was just a lot of work because he had to really put his whole heart in and soul and mind into what God wanted so you yes. know pulling from God all the time you know to see what was you know what he should do yes and you all would host people actually here at the house when they would come in town yeah sometimes mm -hmm. we did we did yes now out of all the people that you hosted from Bishop Winans to so many more names I'm not gonna say because there were so many of them but if you had to pick the most interesting person and the most fun person out of everybody you hosted through the PIP years who would you say was the most interesting? <laughs> Probably my husband. <laughs> but, but, I mean, but really, I mean, we had, I remember, um, we had, well, we would have a reception here, like yeah. on, on, on Thursday, no, no, Wednesday, I think it was Wednesday that we had the, uh, we would have a reception. We would have it, you know, here, and I mean, and the house would be just packed. Yes. And I mean, anyone from Eddie Long to, to, you know, to, you know, to Bishop Brazier, to Bishop Smith, Horace Smith, uh, just a lot of people who came through and, yes. and came, I mean, you know, here, uh, my house would be full and I would have a, a group helping me, you know, with it, but um, I enjoyed, I mean, uh, Marvin Winans was, was, was funny. We Im we even entertained. I ended uh, was BB Winans. Yes, you know, and um, they they have a, a sense of humor and they can make you laugh and they tell all kind of stories. I mean, you know <laughs> that that uh, and and one time uh, Marvin Winans in his brand new suit came and and he was rolling on the floor. I mean, you know things in like a brand new brand new suit. suit, brand new suit. It didn't make him any difference. And at that <laughs> and at that time he had hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, but anyway, uh, I know, but but I but I, I enjoyed everyone who came to the house. Yes, was special. Now everyone who came to the house was really special, and you know, and there's some that I enjoyed, and there's some that um, probably maybe maybe one percent that uh, demanded you know a, a lot of attention. Uh, uh, Stephen uh, Stephen Foster would come through a lot. I mean, even through the years, and I mean, and he was a lot of fun. And and he, his children were about the same age as my children. Yes. And so you know they were able to you know to you know to communicate and and things like that. So you know, everything was a lot of fun, a lot of work. Yes. You know, and the one who had to work the hardest was my husband. Yes. As far as PIP is concerned, and but I mean, but. You know, it it always worked out. It always worked out uh, uh, well. And um, and I remember when Bishop Jakes came, you know, to PIP. Yes. And that was held at church. But you know, uh, it just was. You know, he did not make it here to the house. But I mean, but you know, he but he did come. You know, he was at the church. But I mean, it was just something that you know that was just you know good. I mean, and uh, I remember like some like. Bishop Mark Sharona, they, they, these people that came through and made a mark on my husband's life. Yes. They also, so he made a mark on their lives. And, yes, and he so, did. And a lot of them, when they would speak at PIP, and and they weren't that popular, but when they spoke at PIP, then that's when they begin to get a, a lot of meetings and different things like that and, and become very, very popular. Yes. I remember with Bishop Tudor Bismarck, he was just petrified. He was just <laughs> petrified, you know, when he met my husband and when, and you know, and um, um, I remember the first time that I kind of met them, uh, they came to the house, Yes. but I had had surgery. So basically I was, I was upstairs, I did come down and sit on the step way there and talk to them and things like that. But, but you know, he and Chi Chi, they were so sweet and, and, yes. and so nice. And so, I mean, there's just so many people that I, that we came across, you know, within the ministry yes. that helped to make our lives great as well. Absolutely. Okay. And it's 
it's interesting how you mentioned how your husband made an uh, impact on so many people. I interviewed Dr. Jamal Bryant when I was in college. Oh, yeah, I forgot and about Jamal. I kid you not, I asked him about Bishop Wagner. His exact words were, preaching for Bishop Wagner was honoring and horrifying at the same time. Yeah, they were. A lot, <laughs> a lot, of, lot of them were, were scared of my husband, yes. They yes, were, because they, were. they said, look, this man knows the Bible as much as he knows his hand from mm -hmm. front to back. You mm -hmm. say anything wrong. Now, mm -hmm. son, that's not exactly what that means. That's right. And mm -hmm. people like Dr. Jamal Bryant would get nervous, yeah. uh, Pastor Shell Brady, because they would say, wait a minute, he wants me to come preach? Bishop Wagner wants me to come preach at mm -hmm. his conference, at his mm -hmm. church. Mm -hmm. But to see the respect that you know they had for your husband, how did that make you feel? Oh, it made me feel great because the well, one thing was is that my husband carried himself in such a manner that he was a good na nature person. He liked to laugh and things like that. Yes. But he only went so far. He only went so far because he knew who he was, and he d did not would not want to you know to tarnish what a person thought of him. Yes. You know, and so he carried himself in such a manner. Yes, he did. And carrying himself in such a manner known all around the world, and you carried yourself in such a manner too. Now, I do know that you yourself went through some challenges, and I just want to ask you about this particular one. What was the most difficult thing for you when people would break their neck to speak to Bishop Wagner, but they would not speak to you? Well, at first it was, it, it was um, um, a heart, you know, it, it, it would break my heart that, that I love these people. And, it, you know, I realized that they, it wasn't about me it was about him, and, and so I had to adjust myself to that, and then I reached a certain part, or I matured in such a part in my life that it really didn't matter what they thought of me. Yes. It's always what my husband thought of me and how my husband treated me. Yes. And he never treated me any, any different, and he would always, you know, bring me into yes you know. he would so so it so it was not you know there's a lot of I mean, it doesn't it, it, it just didn't matter yes you know after a period of time it, it, it didn't matter and he never let anybody speak a negative word on you no 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 even when some would go in and tell on me or thought they were telling on me and he would stop them and he'd say don't you ever come in here and come in telling or on my on my wife Yes. You know, and he said, and and some of the things that you said is not her, it's not her her personality, nor is it her words. If you said A B C yes. then I would know that was her. But since you didn't say that and you said this, that wasn't her. So what you what you're doing, you're making up, you know. So it so it was a thing that, that he carried you know, he carried me but you know, he covered me. Yes, he did. As well. And that was the most important thing. His love covered me and, and and that part you know I appreciate yes that you know that he he always respected me and that was the one thing that that I respected him and um, um, you know then when he came home it was a different story I mean <laughs> we, then we, then he I would put him in a different category on, on some things <laughs> you know but other than that I mean you know but there's always that respect that love that concern and things like that for each other, you know, and, um, you know, and, you know, living life without him is one of the hardest things that I've, I've had to learn to do. Yes, you and actually were, you, you were actually into the next question I was getting ready to ask oh, you. Oh, I'm about. sorry. No, it's okay. This is perfect because I was just going to ask you. Now, I know uh, the anniversary of his passing is coming up mm -hmm. and it's something that a lot of us are still like, wow, but life after him is something that we're still trying to get adjusted to. What has it been like for you since he has transitioned? Oh, I can't. I can't even. I can't even explain it. It's. It, it's. It's. Um. It's. I, I've had to go through so many uh, changes, and I had to to walk through some valleys and some and 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 that I never thought that you know that I would walk through. I never thought of, of living life without him. I thought that we would, you know, we would go into the rapture together. I thought that when God came, he would come, you know, with us, you know, together. And, yes. and I, I never thought of him 
leaving. I never thought of him not being here in the house. And it's just, it's been a traumatic thing. God has helped me yes. and he has taken me through, you know, each valley and, you know, and, and where I climbed a mountain and then kind of leveled off a little bit and maybe something else. Then I hit the valley again. But you know, it yes. that's life and I mean and so, you know, it it um it, it's um it's an adjustment. I, I'm still trying to to manage uh life without him. Yes. He he was my life. I mean now he wasn't more than God to me. Correct. It wasn't that. He, you know, he was my husband. He was my friend. He was my lover. Yes. He was all of those things, you know, you know, to me. And I mean, and um, I've never, you know, I someone to know, you know, would I ever marry again? And I tell him I don't think so. I just, you know, I'm just not interested because I mean, he filled all my all those years he just filled my whole life in different ways he filled my whole life and i don't think that it would be fair for me to marry somebody yes. and you know and you know they would be thinking that i would be wanting him them to fill the shoes of my husband and i wouldn't want that Correct. so so therefore i'm going to keep his pair of shoes i have upstairs i'm going to keep <laughs> those there and sometimes i go and i put them on and i just and i sw <laughs> and i do I, I sit in the chair and, and I, I put them on and, 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 and I just swing my, my feet in them and, and, and it helps me to get through yes. you know, some things. And I know that kind of sounds you know, weird, but you know, everybody does what they have to do to oh, get through. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. So, so that's what I do. My children um, you know, struggle and, and my grandchildren. Uh, a story I tell you about with, with Camille, uh, he called Camille two days before he passed, and he told Camille, he said, you know, uh, hurry up and come home. I got something I got to tell you. And so when she finally came, she said, okay, Daddy, what is it that you're going to tell me? What, what do you want to tell me? And so he said, babe, he said, I had this dream. He said, I had this dream. He said, I dreamt. He said, God showed me that you're going to have two children. Wow. He said, two children. He said, and he said, I don't know if they're twins or if or if they're going or if they're going to be separate, he said. I do not know. He said, but God showed me two children, and and he asked her. He said, Camille. He said, Are you trying? She said, Yes, Daddy. I'm beginning to. Uh, we're beginning to try, and I mean, and, and it, you know, and it was an experience, you know, for her. Yes. You know, it really an experience, and I mean, but but those are blessed children. I mean, and, yes, they you know, are. And some when she gets discouraged sometime I tell her Camille you know daddy saw them daddy saw them you know he knows them he knows them and when dream was a baby and and there was a picture of him in in her in the Camille's living room and so she would she would stare at that picture <laughs> she would I mean yes. she was only a few weeks old a few days old and she would stare at that picture and I mean I would watch her she would just look at the picture she was fascinated because she knew him yes you know what i'm saying and so god works some things out you know and uh they put it in they know who his, their grandfather is what he did and, and and things like that and and you know and and i'm i'm not uh um i'm just happy that you know that she has those two yes. you know and and that's it i mean you know that precious children oh too. i mean they're they're anointed children they really are mm -hmm. british British works within the church and she does, I mean, you know, she's, yes. she does what she does with the media and things like that. And she's an excellent student, you know. 4.0 to be exact. And right, she's, she, 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 she's on the president's honor roll, you know. I so, missed it by a couple points. I, I that's all right, 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 that's all right, that's okay. <laughs> that's all right, you still can go back to school and get it. Well, let's pray on it. But like you were saying. <laughs> but I mean, but it, it's just something that his, He's very, he was proud of his daughters and he was proud of his grandchildren. Yes. And, and I mean, and, I, and I'm just glad that he was just that type of person that, you know, that um, um, 
we have this to look back on. We look, yes. we look at it, and you know, and you know, you, we we do. We have those days that it, it's very sad, and then there's other days that you know we laugh at the things. They'll call them and they'll say, "Mommy, do you remember when Daddy did so and so?" And then we would just bust out going laughing. <laughs> so he he left a legacy for us as far as you know the the spiritual side, yes. and then the side as far as what our memories carry and and we just we just carry it on and you know yes. and we love it i mean and and there's solemn there's solemn times you know but but it's okay i mean because you know jesus wept sure so did. and if he wept i mean you know then then you know it's okay for us to weep right it is oh, okay and it's it's perfectly natural and just to see how you know strong the family is still even till this day i believe is incredible now in terms of weeping you know everybody goes through those weeping seasons and i'm pretty sure you as a first lady of a church had some weeping nights and had a few moments being like i need some comfort so who are some of the pastor's wives that you would rely on sometimes as comfort well it started out in when we were on, on the evangelistic field yes and there was one that was, her name was Camille Chappelle in California. Uh, she was an extra, uh, ex, uh, mentor for me. She, she, she really was an excellent mentor. And, um, um, and then there was, um, what was her name? Uh, John Legend's grandmother. Wow, yes. interesting. Yes. Um, I can't think of, of their name right. Floyd, her name was Almira Flo uh, Lloyd. Lloyd, she was an excellent. Yes, she was an excellent one. And, and then there was, um, then there was um, Sister Watkins has been excellent. Sister, Sister, um, um, uh, I, uh, Lorraine Abney and 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 Anna Holt. There were some that when you, when you're in a group and you're young. And you're a bishop's wife, and you're in a group yes. with m more mature women. You know, you're, you're basically you know by yourself. And I remember that I went when I went to a, a convention in California. My husband and I we we flew out, and I mean, and I said, well, okay, I'm going to go to the bishop. I'm going to go to the bishops. I mean, to the wives, the pastors' wives. I mean, yes. And you know, went on down and call myself dressing nice and. And went on, went on down to it and sat there. And I mean, and at that time they had you sitting according to, to the size of your church, which didn't make Whoa. sense. You, you know, that's how you. That's how. And I thought that that was kind of where, you know, if this person here that you're a friend with, they couldn't sit with you because maybe they had ten members and the other maybe had twenty five. And that's very so, interesting. So, but anyway, but. I'm, and I'm just using the numbers as an example. But yes. I remember sitting behind two women. I'll never forget sitting behind two women that um, that I admired, and they turned around to me and said, "What are you sitting up here for?" And I said, "Excuse me." And they said, "Why are you here?" I says, "Well, it said." sit according to the size of your church. I said, in the ch our, my church fit it into this here, you know, into the requirements. And they, they said, hmm, and turned around. And that was it. And it, it made me feel so unequal yes. that when I left out of the meeting, I was almost in tears. And I remember when I saw my husband, I said, I will never go to another minister's wives meeting because I said of what I went through today. Yes. And it took me a long time. It just, it took me a long time Absolutely. to do that. And then, and that's when the older, the older women was like, you know, Sister Watkins and, and, and Lorraine Abney and Anna and, and Ho. I'm, I'm just mentioning some, but there was many. There, yes. there really was many. And, um, but these, but they, took me in they grabbed me by my hand and set me down next to them and things like that and I needed that I mean I really needed that type you know and so when I became what I became yes through my husband then when the younger ones came in then I would grab them and do the same thing with them and set them down you know with you know with you know next to me I yes. mean because it, it it 
I knew what it was to feel like you were not an equal, and even though you had the same title yes. as the others. And my thing is, I never, when my husband was presiding bishop, and I was trying to make a statement that a minister's wife is a minister's wife, because you're a minister before you're anything else. Yes. And you're always going to be that, you're going to be a preacher. Yes. You're going to be a preacher or a minister. Then you become, you get titles, but, but you do not change your, you know, you do not change from a different person to a different person because of, you know, a title. Right. Because a title doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't really make you. You make the title. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And in this day and age, most people need to hear that. Most people need to understand that a title, I remember your husband has said, the bishop is my title, but it's not who I am. Right, exactly, exactly. And, and I mean, but a lot of folks, it's a very important in this day now where a title means a whole life to a person. And I don't like even, it. Even though they're not, even though they're not, you know, I, I remember <laughs> my husband saying one time, he said, these folks are running around here with these titles and they got these briefcases. He said, they probably all they got in there is a Sunday school book. <laughs> you know. I'm laughing because I could really hear him saying that. Oh yeah, he did. He he said it. He said it. I mean, and, and and I mean, and it's really, it's really true. A lot of them were wanting to be something that they were not, yes. and that they were not ready to be. You know, and we have so many. Of course, we have so many uh, coming up there. Were you know, you I knew, I knew so many people, uh, the ministers. You could you, you could. You could almost on your hand. I mean, you know, you could pick out who these people were, and you knew them. But there's so many now. I don't even know. I, I just don't know a lot. A lot of people. Yes. I, you know, uh, as far as concerned, and I, re I mean, it was just so. Uh, certain people they qualified. You couldn't get in everybody and in, into everybody's Correct. pulpit. Not at all. You could not. I don't care who you thought you was and, and, and what kind of briefcase you carried. What kind of briefcase? It didn't matter at, at all. It did not matter at all. And probably some of them still have not gotten in, you know, into some. But, but, yes. but you know, but when, when you're truly, truly called of God, when you're truly called of God, uh, and you can really tell because there's a, a, there is an anointing upon a person's life, yes. a minister's life, and a woman's life. But uh, right now we're talking about you know my husband and and his gr the group of things. Pe so it, it's a thing that 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 uh, you you know you you can't give yourself the anointing. The anointing is something that you got to really pray and fast, and it comes from God. Yes, and that's that that's the thing. And a lot of people they don't want to make that sacrifice. They want to be their own person and do what they're going to do. But, you know, I, I saw my husband live through yes. everything that he was and everything that he said. Things come true. Yes. You know, whether it was dead that that the sister passed that she was gone in church and that she was raised back up, you know, through the prayer and the faith. And I mean just just things, I mean, because I was right there next to her. Yes. And she was, you know, she was, she was, you know, she was gone, basically. But, but Angela Brady, she was there and she was, you know, she was, you know, the nurse and she was, you know, um, trying, you know, to get the pulse and things like that. Yes. And I mean, and, you know, and, you know, when, and then when she coughed, when the woman coughed and things like that, and she started breathing, you know. So yes. it, it was something, you know, it's something to see. You know, it, it's, 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 it's something to see, but yet still scary. Yes. Because you know that had to be God. All God. All God through the way. And, and what it was is that God honored, starting with the man of God and throughout the church, it, 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 God honored the prayers Absolutely. of the saints, you know, and things like that. So, you know, I've, I've, I've seen so much down through the years. Yes, and I find that extremely fascinating, you know, oh, yeah. from the miracles that oh, yeah. the Lord worked through you and your husband, and it's amazing. Now, in this part of your life, you know, you have served faithfully at Calvary. Now you are at Innovation Life Church with your children. What has it been like for you at Innovation Life Church? 
it's been a good experience for me. Um, I've enjoyed working with my, you know, working with my children and, um, and encouraging them and, and, and letting them know that, you know, that, um, you know, God's with them. Yes. You know, I, I, I feel it. And, and I, when I go, I, I'm very peaceful. I'm very peaceful. And I remember sitting in praise and worship one, one Sunday and, and I still had that heaviness on me. And I, you know, I was trying so hard to, to get, get out of that heaviness, out of that cloud, you know, of, of, of things that, that, that was going on with my, you know, with my husband passing and things like that. Yes. And then, and then, but I remember one, the one Sunday that praise and worship was going on and uh, God actually came and he just lifted me up. He just lifted me straight up and my hands went straight up. Wow. And he said to me, he said, your spirit is free. You're free in your spirit. And from that time yes. until now, you know, it happened. I mean, and I appreciate it and I don't take it for granted, yes. but it gives me the freedom where I can work with my children and help my children, you know, help my children, you know, through this time in, in their lives. I yes. mean, you know, and, and I enjoy it. I mean, I really, really enjoy it. And, and I look forward to it. I look, I look forward to it. It gives me, you know, it gives me something, you know, to do, um, my membership and stuff is, you know, still at, you know, at Calvary. I never asked for a letter right. or anything. I mean, because, you know, I feel like that's where I was born into the church there. So therefore, that's still a part of me, you know, but this here would be where I have graduated from some things and gone into with my children now. Yes. Where I can help them, you know, through what they're going through. And I mean, and it, it's a good experience and, and, and I love it. I, I just I just love it. Yes. And I've loved sitting down here, um, you know, with you learning so much about you. Now, at in terms of Calvary now, how proud of you are like how proud of you to see the mantle that was passed from your husband down to Bishop C. Sean Tyson? Well, I I've, I've, you know, I knew him before he was born. So. Yes. Cause he, <laughs> he even told me that you used to babysit him when he was a kid. Yes, yeah, sometimes I would. I, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was. I mean, you know, but I mean, but you know, just from a, just from a, um, um, you see him, you know, come, you know, from, from where he was, you know, to where he is now, and and um, I, you know, I appreciate the church. The church means so much to me. Um, um, you know, I I love you know Bishop Bishop uh, Suffolk and Bishop Tyson. I love him and. Um, um, my sister is married to his brother, so there, you know there's a, a, a relationship there. Yes. So, so it's a it's a thing that that the saints at Calvary, there always will be in my heart. And when I come, when I come, you know, to church, you know, and I sit and you know, and and I, I sit there, and I have many memories. I yes. have many memories in in, in you know in, in, in my mind uh, of things. That has gone on, and 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 what and what is going on now? Yes. And I mean, you know, and and my thing is, you know, I pray and ask God, you know, to keep the church, you know, under His will and under His care, and and you know, it, it's just it's just my prayer that that, you know, Suffolk and Bishop Tyson will take care of himself and yes. slow down. <laughs> he, he, yeah, I want him to slow down. I hope you're listening. <laughs> But I mean, he's gonna get me for that. But it's okay. But I mean, but it, it's the thing, you know, that you have to take care of yourself physically. Yes. You take care, of, like just Jesus, when he got tired, he went off to rest, and that's the same thing I would tell my husband. You know, just like what God did. Yes. You know that, or Jesus did. That's what you have to do. You got to rest. Absolutely. So I would make I would make sure that you know I fit into his schedule vacation time for the kids and he took out twice a year to do things with the kids as far as vacation is concerned yes and of course they always they always wanted to go to disney yes and where i try to get them to go to other places <laughs> <laughs> i took him i took him to vegas because 
I knew that not too many people would bother him or stop him on the street and want to counsel with him. Um, I remember going to Hawaii and for a vacation, and I mean, and I said, okay, well, we're safe here. And all of a sudden, <laughs> safe in the mall, in this great big mall, the, I, we hear somebody saying, Bishop Wagner, Bishop Wagner. Uh-oh. You know, and I mean, and, the, and these two brothers, they came running over to him. You know, and it I, seems like that would happen with you guys a lot. Oh, it did. I mean, it really did. And after a period of time, you know, I just told him, I said, there's no place you can go without, you know, <laughs> without, you know, somebody. <laughs> you oh, know. yeah. But the one thing is what I'm uh, reiterating is getting away. You know, you get you get away and refresh yourself. And, you know, and 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 um, my husband never changes when, when it came down to going on vacation. He still took that time in his day yes for his for his for his prayer and things like that yes he and you all know, the way yes, all he the way he, he never he that's something that he never changed on and things like so it so it's you know um, um, you, you never know who who would come into the church who God would have come into the church to be the pastor of the church you know um, it, so at this time right now, Bishop, you know, Suffolk Bishop Tyson. And like I said, I want him to take care of himself so his body will mend and heal. Yes. You know, so that's it. And I'm definitely sure he will after seeing this. And the last thing, you know, you are at Innovation Life Church and your son is the pastor over there. How proud of you are him? How proud of you uh -huh. to see that he has now stepped into the pastorate? I, I, I'm very, very proud of him and Camille because they sought God's will. Yes. It wasn't that they just said, oh, I'm going to start a church somewhere. It wasn't even about that. Uh, Camille had a job in, in, in Las Vegas and, 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 uh, and, and um, but when God put it on their heart, and, I, for, and for some reason I started praying for them in that, in that vein and things yes. like that. And I remember call, and Camille would call me every morning when she would take, um, when she would take uh, Dream to school, and then um, and then when she would, you know, then she would come back, and then she would then she would be going to work, yes. and she would call me, and and we you know we would talk about church, and we would talk about different things, and this one morning, she said, "Mommy," she said, "What are you doing?" I said, "Oh, babe, I'm sitting here." I said, "I'm reading, I'm reading the Bible." She says, "Well, what are you reading?" I said, I'm in Samuel. I said, and I'm reading, I'm reading about, you know, uh, Samuel and, and, um, and Eli and, 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 you know, and God calling, you know. I said, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to find a certain part in here. I'm looking for something in here. I, I need it. I need to find something in here because I just feel something's getting ready to happen. Yes. And then, you know, and she said, oh, mommy, she says, that's so odd. She says, I'm reading the same thing. Interesting. And I said, oh, I said, okay. Yes. So that gave me, a, you know, a sanction right then and there. But they're very dedicated. Yes, they they're, are. They're, they're very, very, and they're very, very sincere. Um, yes, they are. And I'm going to say it because I see it because I've been around it for a long time that he's anointed of God. All and, the way. And, and uh, you know, and he does a lot of, you know, he does things that, you know that my husband told him to do. My husband said, "You stay in the Word." My husband would counsel with him, and and in in this in his office over here, he would mm -hmm. sit and he would go up one side and down the other, telling him things, what to do, what not to do, and uh, are you doing this and different <laughs> things like. So he was really getting him ready because he said he said now one day he said one day son you're going to pastor. He said one day you're going to pastor, and so you know um, we didn't know when. I mean yes. and things like that, but I mean. Um, I, 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 all I know is that when he did call him, you know, and I, and uh, um, and I cannot take it down. I, I just feel like he has the call on all pastor, and, and he has the anointing, and that's the most important thing because, you know, I I know what they have given up and the sacrifice that they had yes. given up to come back this way. And it's not an easy thing to give up. No, it's it's not. It, it really isn't. It really isn't. I, I just remember our beginnings, and I remember. And I remember their beginnings, and and when I can tell that you know that maybe there's not what they feel like should be there, and I would touch her on the shoulder. I says, 
we went through the same thing. Yes. Be encouraged. You'll be okay. And I said, God will do. Yes, he will. You know, and that's, and that's the same thing. I mean, so, you know, it is what it is. And it's just, you know, history repeating itself. It is. You know, and, and, but with God being in it like he was with us, he's, God is with him and God's at, at, you know, at Calvary. And Calvary is going to always be my home. I mean, it's always going to be my home, my church home and things like that. And, you know, and, you know, and, but and and until he sends me back home, I'm here. I'm, yes. I'm here with the, with the children, helping them and watching my grandchildren, and, and and that's that's the most important thing to me. Last thing I'll ask you, and I want you to repeat after me: Norman Wagner is, and then I want you to complete that sentence. Norman Wagner is great. There's nothing else I can even add on that. I mean, he really is. So without any further ado, First Lady, Dr. Rita Helen Wagner, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for taking this time oh, out with thank me. You. Thank Greatly you. I love appreciate you. I, thank I love you. you. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, guys, I got to get out of here. Be sure to like and share. Please tag somebody in this video. And last thing I'll say, Bishop Wagner, we love you. Thank you for everything. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Heaven smile upon you. Be sure to like and share this video. Chris Gunther Show, I'll see you next time. To the legend and to the greatest to ever do it. We thank you for your prayers, we thank you for your support, and we thank you for your great example. Happy birthday, Bishop Wagner. We love you.